Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at programming chain conveyor transfer with do more. In this tutorial, we will learn how to program a chain conveyor transfer using do more. The easy PLC software suite includes a machine simulator or MS with pre-programmed machines, including the chain conveyor. This machine can move boxes of various sizes along the production line, transferring them to different locations. We will use the Do More Designer PLC software to program this virtual machine and connect the simulator to the chain conveyor. Communication will be established through Modbus TCP or Ethernet. We will follow the five steps of program development to guide you through this process. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Step 1. Define the task. The first step of PLC program development is to define the task to determine what must be done. Easy PLC Software Suite contains this chain conveyor transfer example in the machine simulator. This is just one of many machines with the software so you can learn and develop your PLC programming skills. Start the Easy PLC Machine Simulator or MS. Select the start button on the main page or select machines from the main menu at the top of the machine simulator window. All of the available machines will now be displayed. Click on 02 Chain Conveyor. This is the example we will be programming. To the left of the screen, information will be displayed on how this process needs to function. Two goods will arrive on the cargo line, some with high boxes and others with smaller packages. Goods with high boxes should be sent to the transporter on the right and the small boxes to the left. Use the reading station with two photo cells to make the selection and the chain conveyor to move the pallets to the appropriate conveyor. The green light will be on when the system is ready to run. When the start is pressed, the stop light will be on indicating how the system is to be stopped. Pressing the emergency stop button will turn off both lights and stop the sequence. The machine simulator has a demo mode for the built-in machines. Select the demo mode. This will allow you to watch the operation of this easy transfer line and help see what must be done. Move around the 3D virtual environment. The icons on the top of the window will allow you to move around this 3D environment. The first icon is the default selection. This will enable you to move around without bumping into components. The first person mode will mimic a person in your 3D learning world. The third person is used to show the operator's relationship to the machine. The last icon will automatically show you around this virtual environment. Once we understand what must be done, we can move on to the next step in our PLC program development. Step 2. Define the inputs and outputs. Start the chain conveyor in start mode. Select View I.O. to display the inputs and outputs required for this machine. The chain conveyor transfer will require 11 digital outputs and 9 digital inputs. Clicking on the digital outputs will activate it. Spend time fully understanding the I.O. inputs and outputs functions. You can move around in the 3D environment and see the I.O. and items from different angles. The machine simulator will communicate with the Do More Designer PLC simulator. Communication will be done with Modbus TCP or Ethernet. The Do More series of PLCs use a fixed Modbus memory area. This area can be seen in the following chart.
Spend time fully understanding the I.O. inputs and output functions. Step three, develop a logical sequence of operation. A flow chart or sequence table is used to understand the process that needs to be controlled thoroughly. It must also answer questions like the following. What happens when electrical power or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when inputs and outputs devices fail? Do we need redundancy? This step is where you can save a lot of work by understanding everything about the operation. It will help prevent you from continuously rewriting the PLC program logic. Knowing all these answers up front is vital in developing the PLC program. Our chain conveyor transfer can be seen as three different operations. The conveyor distribution will create and put a skid on the belt. The skid will then be moved to the conveyor chain. Once the conveyor chain, it will decide the right or left direction based on the photocell detecting height. Remember, a PLC programmer must know everything about the sequence and operation of the machine before programming. Ask questions or view existing documentation to ensure you know the logical steps to the machine's operation. Step four, develop the PLC program. Writing the ladder logic for our PLC example will be the next step in our program development. The chain conveyor Transfer starts and stops with a ceiling circuit for the stop button light. Our stop button light contact will control the rest of the ladder. The start and stop lights are off when emergency stop is activated. This indicates to the operator that emergency stop must be reset. Here's the logic for the work part creation conveyor. Pre-stop stop operation will control when the skid moves onto the belt conveyor. The conveyor distributes advance belt conveyor based on the pallet sensor and chain rising signal. Stop stop or barrier will separate the skids as they transfer from the belt to the chain conveyor. The conveyor chain advance will bring the pallet into the chain conveyor. As the chain conveyor advances, the pallet sensor will activate. This will reset the chain conveyor advance and set the left or right pallet bits, depending on the photocell box sensor. Once it has been determined that the pallet is moving right or left, the conveyor chain rises. When the conveyor chain rises input is on, the pallet will move left or right and start timer timing for five seconds. This timer is used to allow the pallet to move off the conveyor chain. At the end of the five second timer, the pallet rise, left and right bits are reset. The conveyor belt on the left and right will be on when the machine is running. This is the end of the program. Ensure that the Do More Designer PLC simulator is online. Transfer the program to the simulator and go into run mode. Select status on the main menu to see the active status of the inputs and outputs for our ladder logic. Step five, test the program. We will use Modbus TCP on our Do More Designer PLC simulator to communicate with the Easy PLC machine simulator. Select system configuration from the project browser under the tools heading. You can also select this from the main menu, PLC, systems configuration. Under the internal ethernet port configuration, the IP address will be displayed. Since this is the PLC simulator, it is the same as your computer IP address. You will see the Modbus TCP server configuration to the right of the port settings. This is enabled by default. The settings can be viewed under the Modbus TCP settings button. We will leave these as their defaults. Call up the easy transfer line in start mode. The status of the machine simulator will be at the bottom of the screen. Currently we have no PLC connected. Select I.O. on the bottom middle of the screen. Under the driver pull-down menu, select Modbus driver. This driver will communicate Modbus TCP, Ethernet, and Modbus RTU serial. 
select the configure button. We can now enter the information for our Modbus driver. Select TCP IP. This means the computer's ethernet port will communicate to the PLC. Enter the address of the PLC simulator or computer. The default port for our Modbus TCP is 502. The digital inputs from MS to the DoMore PLC simulator will be MC1 to MC16. This will start at address 0 due to the offset of 1. Digital outputs from MS to the DoMore PLC simulator will be MI1 to MI16. This will begin at address 0 due to the offset of 1. No errors will occur if we set the number of inputs and outputs higher than we require. Select the OK button. You can now see the inputs and outputs specified for the Modbus driver. We can now manually assign the driver outputs to the PLC and driver inputs to the PLC outputs. To save time, we can use an automatic assignment for this operation. Ensure that the I.O. is in the same order as the Easy PLC simulators. Select Automatic Assignment from the Driver option in the main menu. This will automatically assign the PLC I.O. to the Machine Simulator I.O. Select Start Driver and exit from the main menu. You will see that the driver is operating on the bottom left side of your window. Ensure that the PLC simulator is in run mode. If not, then move the toggle switch to run. Select View I.O. to know the input and output status of the machine simulator. Move around and press the lighted green button on the control panel to start the chain conveyor transfer machine. Move around and test your program for all possible events. Using Machine Simulator MS to test the program will ensure that our program works. The Easy PLC Machine Simulator is the easiest way to learn PLC program. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.